The Forest by Claire A. Nivola for Miriam, Hedda, Anne, and Dan, and Rudy, the beloved pillar of my forest, and for Tolstoy's Prince Andre, who, fallen in battle, looked up to see the lofty, equitable, and kindly sky and understood so much. I had always been afraid of the forest, that dark and unknown place at the farthest edge of my little world. At night I often dreamed of it and woke chilled with fear. The fear was there in the day, too, hidden inside me no matter what I did or where I went. One night the fear pressed so heavily on me that I could bear it no longer. In the morning, standing in the doorway of my home, I saw the cozy chair by the fire, my warm bed, and the objects I loved. I turned and closed the door behind me. I walked through the village that I knew like the back of my hand. I passed the shops and houses laid out in their familiar order and followed the long curve of the street. On the high road, my heart began to race. I no longer felt like myself, but small and alone in the big world. I walked on and on past unknown farms and fields until the paved road ended. Uneasy, I looked back at my village, a dot in the distance. Looming before me, Shaking its many heads slowly in the wind stood the forest. Should I turn back? Should I run back, heart racing to the safety of my house? No, I had come too far. But would I lose myself? Would I be devoured by some wild creature? Would I die of fear? I stepped inside the forest between two pillar trees that stood like a gateway. My heart was pounding. A sharp bird call from behind made me jump. Something cracked nearby, and a dark shadow moved swiftly toward me, coming closer, closer. Leaping for cover, I tripped, and I fell headlong to the ground. Lie still, I thought. If you cry or move, you will be found. Could my thundering heart be heard outside my head? When I opened my eyes, my nose was deep in moss a forest of tiny trees as soft as feathers. The sunlight was raining down through the leaves and warming my back. A sweet breeze stirred my fur. I was alive. How long had I been here? A butterfly opened and shut its wings nearby, like a guardian angel. I listened. All around me, a million leaves whispered and rustled gently. I rolled over it and for the first time looked up. High above I saw the sky. The sky was bigger than the forest, bigger even than my fear had been, bigger than everything. I lay there, a speck in this enormous beauty, until the light began to fade. Then, with the sweet, murmuring world of the forest filling me, I walked the long way home. The Girl and the Wolf by Katharina Vermette pictures by Julie Flett. The girl ran through the bush while her mother picked berries. She was helping, but mostly running. Don't go too far, her mother called. It's going to be dark soon. Okay, the girl said, but she just kept running. Suddenly, the girl looked up. And she couldn't see her mother anywhere. She panicked and looked one way, but didn't see her. She tried to calm down and look the other way, but she still couldn't see her. Everything got quiet 
and dark. The girl felt cold and scared. She didn't know what to do. Out from between the trees, a tall gray wolf with big white teeth appeared. The girl was very still. What are you doing out here by yourself? asked the wolf. I lost my mother, she said. I can't see my way back. You must be scared, little one, said the wolf in a quiet voice. Yes, I am, the girl told him. Do you know the way back? he asked. The girl shook her head. The wolf came up and sniffed her. His breath was hot and stank of meat. I think I know where you come from, little one, said the wolf. But it is almost dark. You must be hungry. Yes, I am, the girl nodded, and her stomach rumbled. Do you know how to hunt? asked the wolf. The girl shook her head. What are you going to do? asked the wolf. The girl looked around. Everything was quieter and darker. The girl felt very cold and very scared. I don't know, she said sadly. Yes, you do, the wolf told her. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes. Then, look. What do you see? The girl did what he said, and when she opened her eyes, she saw something that made her feel better. I can eat those berries. They are safe to eat, the ones by the stream where the water is safe to drink. She pointed. That's good, little one, said the wolf. Let's go. The girl drank in gulps and ate two handfuls of berries. Now what are you going to do? Asked the wolf. The girl looked around. Everything was still quiet and pretty dark. I don't know, she said sadly. Yes, you do, the wolf told her. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes. Then, look. What do you see? The girl did what he said. And when she opened her eyes, she saw something that made her feel better. The skinny trees over there. That's where we camped, the girl said with a big grin. The gray wolf nodded and smiled at her with his big white teeth. The girl started walking, but was really running. She ran to the air that smelled like her family. She laughed out loud and looked at her side, but she did not see the gray wolf anywhere. She looked one way, but didn't see him. She looked the other way, but still couldn't see him. Just then, her mother appeared with her basket full of berries. Oh, my girl, her mother cried. I told you not to go too far. Mama! I was lost, and a wolf helped me, the girl told her. Her mother was surprised. A wolf? Yes, the girl said. He was big and gray. At first I thought he was going to hurt me. Her mother smiled. Real wolves can hurt people, but I've heard old stories about wolves who help lost children, too. The girl smiled. She was glad the wolf had been the helping kind. When they returned to their camp, the girl told everyone about her big adventure with the special wolf. That night, she tied tobacco in a red cloth and left it at the bush's edge because she didn't know a better way to say thank you.